Namrit, can you hear me? Namrit, can you hear me? Sir, good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Oh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, yeah, that is. Uh, good evening, Dr. Ajeev Sooth. Good evening. Today, you know, that uh, um, in uh, Tamil Nadu, all MCH exams are today. Stanley, uh, Kilpok, okay. Raita, and uh, uh, this is MMC. So, okay. I just entered, had shower and just uh, this. I thought I should not get late. So, okay. but there was some, um, uh, this shower, some network issue. They couldn't send me the mark sheet for sign. So, I was just telling them. <laughs> okay, okay. Dr. Dineshan, good evening. Hello, yeah, yeah, please unmute yourself, sir. Please unmute. Okay, okay sir. Please come your video on and audio. On. Uh, good evening, Dr. Dineshan. Good evening. Uh, good evening. <laughs> Welcome. Dinesh. Uh, Welcome. Uh, yeah. Dr. Dinesh, how was your day today? Busy or? <laughs> <laughs> I was a little, uh, not much busy. Actually, I was uh, I, I was just going through rearranging all these things because I uh, yesterday I could just uh, arrange some slides. Today I rearranged the whole thing. So. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Dr. Rajiv, Dr. Dineshan is a very busy surgeon. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> very busy urologist. <laughs> in, in the hospital and outside the hospital too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why. <laughs> uh, for him, day starts after 5 o'clock only in the evening. <laughs> uh, no, no, not exactly these days. <laughs> these corona days, it is not like that. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, that is fine. But I, I understand that you are very, very busy and very committed to urology. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, what I'm planning is, I discussed with you yesterday, I'll just have a discussion on, uh, I'll just have a brief talk on the subject. And uh -huh. after that, after that, I'm going to present a case and a okay. discussion. Okay. And a okay. discussion fine. with her. Postgraduates. Good evening, sir. Good evening. You are muted. You have to unmute yourself. You have to unmute yourself. I am on TV program. Okay. For five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Okay. We have five minutes more to eight o'clock. Rajiv must be, and Rajiv and Arun, you must be engaged in almost every other, every day you are having this uh, webinar. <laughs> yeah, I have engaged in many things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this Sunday we have that uh, our HS, but. Uh, Workshop. In the morning, which is but the symposium is there. Uh, yeah. And from 10 to 1, and in the 10. evening, we are having a webinar too, because we uh, should reschedule the USI webinar because uh, HSBUT symposium is there. We have to make uh, space for it. Okay. Uh, so we shifted to the evening. In, okay. From the morning, we reschedule to the evening. Okay. The Dr. Dineshan is sharing one session in that also. 
His the first session is being chaired by Dr. Dinesh. Opening. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you will you will get the invite with the link, sir. Tomorrow, day after tomorrow, I think. Okay. Okay. Already invitation has already come, and the link is. For a for a it has to go to USA patent and USA secretary also. Everybody has to go. Yeah. Calicut hmm. exams are over. Ah, uh, calicut exams are over. I think almost a month. Uh, nearly almost a okay. month. Okay. Okay. Uh, declared the officially declared the results and the boys have started their uh, residency. That is, they have okay. a compulsory bond, bonded residency. They have already started. Is the bond there in calicut for many years? Uh, uh, in fact, it was actually three years, but now they have reduced to one year. It okay. Is still there. Okay, that they they are posted in the same department or they are posted somewhere else after no, they. Actually, this year they are posted in same department. Almost have, uh, last few years, so they have been posted here here only. But one of one of our candidates, he opted for Trichur and uh, yes, gone to Trichur. He opt because he opted yes, for the, the last few years. They have been serving for three years post uh, MCH in the department. Ah, uh, actually, uh, last year the process, as per the prospectus, it was three years, and mm -hmm. somebody from Kottayam went to the uh, approached the high court, the high court, and re got it reduced to one year. Hello, are we on? Not yet, sir. Not yet. Okay. Actually, I was on uh, Doordarshan uh, DD News. So Excellent. that uh, live uh, uh, news was going on. I was giving update uh, about Delhi. Oh, very good. Very good. How was the situation, sir? I think center has given 600 ICU bed also now. Actually, we are all in the all institutions. We are increasing the beds and also 250 beds in DRDO and 600 beds. Uh, are added and in two three days and uh, actually we have enough beds general beds but uh, we were short of ICU beds so okay. ICU beds augmentation is going on and uh, it is not that difficult we are finding because we need now uh, high flow oxygen not the ventilator on uh, every bed earlier concept when we started creating the concept was that you need so many ICU beds then so many ventilators. So that concept is not there, and in uh, mostly people are not on ventilators. Mm, okay. So uh, that sir, is over to you. Sir. Over to you. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Chairman, Indian School of Urology, Professor Rajiv Sooth, Co-Chairman, Dr. Arun Chawla, the faculty for today's program, Dr. K. Dineshan, and uh, dear residents. Today we are having an interesting topic uh, for discussion. This is uh, renovascular hypertension. And uh, we have uh, Dr. K. Dineshan, who is the professor of urology at Calicut Medical College, Kerala, who will be deliberating and he will be discussing the various issues related with renovascular hypertension. Actually, last few days, due to request from various sources and because of the ensuing uh, uh, Diwali, Dibavali festivities, we have to reschedule many of the programs. And in between, uh, we have to reschedule one of the things because uh, one of the faculty fell sick 
so last uh, few days we didn't have so today we will start with reno vascular hypertension and the talk on uh, urodynamics is rescheduled to next monday so with these few words i welcome you once again to the usi resident smart learning program and uh, now i would request a professor rajiv sooth to the chairman indian school of urology to say a few words over to you sir thank you dr rajiv this is a great time and festivity when uh, chhat puja celebration started yesterday and they will continue for next couple of days and in this festive continuing festivity i extend greetings from indian school of urology and in this uh, distant learning program which is a great success in uh, indian school of urology we have uh, selected around 50 uh, lectures uh, in the year or you can say in uh, nine months which were available after uh, april and uh, this is very important lecture which uh, is uh, important for uh, uh, residents as well as uh, for the teaching faculty because uh, reno vascular hypertension is a important clinical entity in our opds in our clinical scenario and also in theory in uh, in in our uh, various kind of examination viva or uh, or, or, or oral uh, interviews and tables and everywhere the knowledge of reno vascular hypertension which can be the side effect of uh, so many things so many conditions the renal conditions or can be uh, present right from the beginning and the associated the congenital or later on acquired uh, conditions which cause uh, reno vascular hypertension are important we have now dr k m dineshan from calicut an eminent professor and uh, Uh, he is a very good teacher and uh, he, we are privileged that uh, uh, to have him and he will be addressing the residents of, from all over the country and also from the sar countries and other uh, delegates who are uh, um, uh, uh, logging in and this is going to become the part of our uh, program also at the end i'll uh, 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 archives also and at the end i'll uh, only mention that when we are uh, uh, reaching the month of december and we will be completing our series of programs in the uh, usa smart learning program um, we will invite suggestions for the next year uh, topics so that we have some topics in the archive in some uh, areas there is lot of uh, uh, developments and also i'll uh, tell residents that uh, the whole uh, program under national medical uh, commission and also in the teaching uh, with icmr modules it is totally changing mbbs it has changed i am part of the internship modification of program we have already slated the um, competency based program and in the competency i am repeating there are five levels that is the knowledge that no 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 how Uh, to explain that uh, in didactic lectures and this kind of distant learning programs and there is show and show how where uh, we demonstrate and the our uh, programs of indian school urology are dedicated for the uromet program various kind and then performance and in the performance there are the observation and uh, hands on uh, uh, workshops maybe the cadaveric workshops also where performance can be tested so therefore we are um, in the this compo important component of the competency based program we uh, invite this lecture lecture and suggestions from all the uh, stakeholders uh, maybe residents and the faculty and i welcome again you all for this reno vascular hypertension uh, lecture uh, come interactive sessions under usi smart learning program thank you very much thank you sir for your enlightening words now i would welcome uh, dr k dineshan who is the professor of urology at calicut medical college hospital calicut and uh, he will be deliberating on uh, uh, reno vascular hypertension over to you k dineshan thank you rajiv thank uh, thank you arun uh, for asking me to do this academic session I, am i audible yeah okay uh, okay uh, 
okay i'll without wasting much time i'll go straight away go to the my talk As you, as you all know, uh, any impedance to the renal blood flow can produce hypertension. But um, every case of uh, renal artery occlusion with hypertension is not you know, vascular hypertension. It's a clinic, actually, it's a clinical syndrome marked by a rise in the blood pressure with or without associated ischemic and hypertensive renal injury. So it is not just a combination of hypertension and renal artery occlusion. And the commonest cause of renal artery, uh, renal, renal, renal vascular hypertension is renal artery stenosis. And renal artery stenosis, actually, it is defined as the narrowing of the renal artery by more than 50% of its normal luminal diameter. Why this 50% is coming is I'll explain it a little late, little later. And that is, and the renal artery stenosis is prob probably the commonest of the potential, uh, commonest cause of a secondary hypertension, which is potentially curable. And uh, when you take all the hypertensive patients together, 5% of hypertensive uh, or, or these patients uh, have this renovascular hypertension. Yeah. And uh, if you take all the ESRD patients uh, on uh, renal replacement therapy, 10 to 20% of them are having. So it is a substantially a good percentage of patients having renal artery, uh, re renovascular hypertension. And if you take, uh, if you in the group of hypertensive patients, um, actually moderate to severe hypertension. These are the patients who are likely to have uh, renovascular hypertension. Very, very likely, very, uh, very less chance when they have a mild or moderate hypertension, many mild hypertension. And uh, nearly 50 percent, nearly half of the malignant hypertension patients also have uh, renovascular. So majority of renovascular present as malignant hypertension. And in the population study in India, recently uh, reported, uh, it shows that uh, about 0.8% of urban population had this renovascular hypertension. So it is not a rare entity. Now coming to the etiology of this renovascular hypertension or the renal artery stenosis. And the commonest uh, cause of renal, renal, uh, renal artery stenosis is atherosclerosis. As you all know, it is uh, nearly 70% nearly of the cases of renal artery occlusion, renovascular renal artery stenosis caused by atherosclerosis. And the rest is fibromuscular dysplasia. It's a, it's a group of diseases, fibromuscular dis, uh, dis, uh, dysplasia. And uh, atherosclerosis as such, is yeah, you, you all know the details of the, uh, the spectrum of disease. It is a generalized disorder, disorder of the disease of the vascular tree, more common, prevalent in the middle and older age group, and uh, more common in male. And as far as the renal artery is concerned, mo major part of the uh, occlusion occurs at the near the ostium because it is iota is also in, involved so the ostium is involved in more than 70 to 80 percent of the situations and in non-osteal narrowing again the proximal part of the uh, renal artery is involved one to three centimeter away from the ostium so the pro proximal part of the renal artery is involved in uh, non-osteal lesions 
and when you look at the fibromuscular dysplasia it is more common in women and usually it is bilateral but and again even though fibromuscular dysplasia occurs uh, mainly in the renal artery other vessels also may be involved but here unlike atherosclerotic lesions the distal segments of the renal arteries are usually involved now look this is what i was referring to about the percentage of occlusions you uh, just look at the here this is the stenosis you the x axis so you have the stenosis and the y axis the flow percentage of flow and you can see that uh, up to 50% actually there is no 50% of uh, lumen is occluded you have actually there is no absolutely not much no much reduction in the blood flow so after beyond 50 it start the flow start reducing and now about 75 it so up to 75 percent of occlusion not much hemodynamically not much of uh, change is occurring in the renal blood flow so but after that sorry it is so uh, your screen is not shared sir it's not shared okay yeah I, not shared sir sorry Is it okay? Is it okay? No, no, no not, not yet. yet. We are not seeing the screen. Okay, okay, I have to come back. Okay. Not yet. Yeah, fine. Okay, okay. You can make it slide uh, full screen, sir. Ah, it's I, okay then. Now, after seventy-five percent of occlusion, it drastically drops. So that's why I said uh, to uh, actually the occlusion is defined as fifty percent occlusion. So come to the other causes of uh, these are all rare causes: endovascular stent migration, post trauma, trauma, extrinsic compression, aortic dissection. Neurofibromatosis and congenital some uh, dentic disorders like so these are all very rare causes for uh, renal, renal artery stenosis. Now coming to the going to the atherosclerosis, yes, you are, uh, we have already discussed uh, majority of cases of renal vascular lesions are atherosclerotic, seventy percent, and male predominant. And uh, again, it is a part of generalized atherosclerosis. Iota and other major vessels are also involved. Most of the patients. And in 40, more than 40 percent of patients, it is a progressive disease and produces the thrombotic phenomenon. And uh, as, you, as we have already discussed, the renal artery stenosis usually occurs in the proximal two centi two to three centimeters of renal artery as well as proximal. And in majority of the cases, the plaques are eccentric. And the circumferential narrowing occurs only in one third of cases. Come to the fibrous dysplasia. This is a spectrum of diseases, and the commonest is medial fibroplasia. And uh, medial fibroplasia uh, 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 constitutes around 70 to 80, 80 85 percent of cases of fibrous dysplasia. And all this fibrous dysplasia, or as such, is more common in females. This is common in uh, age group of 20 to 50 years. And this is a classical string of beat appearance you see in angiography. In the media, you have a, a collagen, the increased collagen deposit. And uh, where you have the collagen deposit, you have the stenotic lesions. And in between stenotic lesions, the media is bellowed out to form a new lesion. And most often, these lesions are bilateral. And uh, But on, the thing is that uh, this medial hyperplasia usually does not progress to occlusion and usually does not produce uh, renal dysfunction, unlike other other uh, displays, fibrous dysplasia. And uh, perimedial 
the outer layers of the media, there is fiber, fibrous reaction. And again, here also the spring of weed appearance is there, but the difference between this perimedial and the medial uh, fibroplasia is that in the perimedial, the string of the aneurysmal dilatation does not go beyond the diameter of the uh, renal artery. But in medial fibroplasia, the ballooning, so uh, it goes beyond and it, it enlarges sacular aneurysmal dilatation enlarges beyond the confines of the renal artery. So that difference. But here again, uh, this is uh, this occurs in the distal half of the uh, uh, distal part of the aorta, uh, renal artery, and it can spread into the branches. And usually, it progresses and produces renal occlusion and loss of renal function. Intimal fibroplasia, again, rare, uh, only 10% of cases. Uh, since the intima is fibrous, part of the intima is fibrous, it produces uh, dissection, arterial wall, uh, the thrombus, it can produce thromboembolism, renal infarction, dissection, all those complications. It can lead on to all those complications and it can produce renal dysfunction also. And But here it occurs in the proximal renal artery. And there is another entity which is medial hypoplasia, which is uh, difficult to differentiate between intimal hypoplasia in, in on angiography. Only thing is on histology, there is only hyperplasia, there is no fibrosis. So the difference between these three are uh, the medial fibroplasia, fibroplasia does not progress and it will not. Uh, uh, produce renal dysfunction or all other lesions can progress and produce renal dysfunction also. Others can produce all these things, uh, lesions can produce hypertension, but uh, medial fibroplasia, which is the commonest, which it will not produce renal dysfunction. Now, a little bit about the pathophysiology of renal vascular hypertension. This, the, the, this was explained uh, following uh, in detail following the classical dog experiments performed by Goldblatt long back in the uh, 30s. And uh, everybody knows the classical two kidney, one tip, and, and the one kidney, one, one, one clip models. And the two kidney, one clip model represents the unilateral renal artery occlusion. And uh, yeah. no. Commonest cause of nowadays the commonest uh, uh, example for uh, a one kidney one tip is that transplant renal artery stenosis. Other other uh, one one kidney one tip uh, uh, situations are a solitary functioning kidney or a unilateral stenosis with a contralateral non-functioning kidney. So when you, uh, we will go to the two kidney one tip model. So when in the early phase of renal artery, uh, early phase when when you have a unilateral di disease, unilateral renal, renal artery occlusion, uh, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system is act activated by the hypoperfusion of on in that in that uh, to that uh, kidney. And when you have that, uh, when when there is hypoperfusion, the renin uh, secretion is increased. So the ipsilateral re uh, renal vein, uh, renin is increased, the uh, renin level is increased. And ultimately, pre uh, the angiotensin II synthesis from the lung is uh, increased. So it results in generalized vasoconstriction and, and hypertension. And uh, aldosterone, uh, this uh, angiotensin II is a potent stimulator of aldosterone, and that results again results into sodium and fluid retention from the stenotic kidney. All these things are remediated through the uh, angiotensin II. But we have in the situation we have normal kidney on the opposite side. So what happens on the normal kidney when you have a fluid retention and sodium retention from the obstructed kidney? That is the vascular obstruction. Uh, this increased hydrostatic pressure, that the perfusion pressure is very high because of the hypertension as well as the fluid load. 
and because of the sodium load the net there is net resistance and the distortive tubule sodium content is high so i because of the high pressure high perfusion pressure and the sodium load there is a pressure on the rain in on north of side so in the equilateral rain in is very low in rain in is high and the frontal lateral there is a pressure on the rain perfusion so that is that occurs in the early phase so this both kidneys are acting against each other and uh, that is one kidney that's the where the renal artery occlusion is there it conserves fluid conserves uh, uh, sodium but the opposite kidney which is normal it uh, expels it uh, excretes uh, fluid and same time excretes sodium so ultimately there is the euvolemia there is no fluid load so hypertension is actually dependent at the stage on a hypertension tube but as it at time goes on there is uh, again damage to the opposite kidney because of the increased perfusion increased uh, because of the hypertension so once uh, glomerular as well as tubular damage occurs on the opposite kidney and eventually the circulating angiotensin 2 level also decreases and ultimately this also goes in for a more independent hypertension and uh, later on and actually novic uh, uh, includes it in a, the here it is a, a second phase uh, it is uh, actually the hypertension is uh, again volume dependent as well as uh, dependent on the sympathetic or activity and the volume and the sodium so uh, novic Uh, actually, actually, in the original description, he says that there is a third phase where it is it become autonomous. So the total the vascular changes, irreversible vascular changes occurs in the vascular tree, whole vascular tree, as well as cardiac changes also occurs because of the long term effect of hypertension and angiotensin. So. ultimate and that become irreversible and autonomous so coming to the one kidney one click model the rain secretion from the so initially there is rain secretion from the sort of kidney because of the ischemia when uh, renin angiotensin and respiratory system is uh, activated producing hypertension but uh, there is uh, hypertension because uh, but there is there is no opposite kidney there is no good, fun, good functioning kidney on the opposite side so there is increase in the blood pressure sodium retention and again volume ret- retention because sodium and volume uh, fluid is not excreted by the normal kidney there is no diuresis no, uh, from the so ultimately there is a volume expansion and it is a, a actually a volume dependent uh, Uh, hypertension and the increase because of the increased volume there is also sub it is suppresses the renin also so and because of the renin is suppressed there is circulating and angiotensin 2 levels are also decreased so hypertension is maintained by the volume as well as the sodium in single one kidney one kidney model now coming to the clinical features so every case of, uh, you cannot suspect every case of hypertension or evaluate every case of hypertension for a renal artery obstruction so where will you go for how will you look go go about looking for the hypertension renal vascular disease in hypertension so these are there are certain criteria you go for a, when you have a severe or a refractory hypertension with the evidence of uh, hypertensive preparation of body it's three or four hypertensive preparation of body so these are these patients definitely look for renovascular disease when there is an abrupt onset of moderate to severe hypertension especially when you have uh, they were when they were normal no pregnancy or a, or in a previously well controlled right, hypertensive uh, when there is an abrupt onset of severe hypertension so another group of patient is either in early onset when you have any when, when hypertension occurs below before age of 20 or in a late onset when you have when there is no family history of hypertension another patient, group of patient is when you have a 
And uh, when the patient is on AC inhibitors, For hypertension, and when the when the renal function is worsening, on renal, uh, I will come to that worsening part a little later. Uh, when when you put up on IC inhibitor or uh, receptor blockade, and there is a worsening of the uh, renal function, then also you have to suspect the renal artery. And again, when there is fluid loss and uh, Paradoxical worsening of hypertension. The perfusion is still become reduced on the ischemic kidney also because of diuresis. That, that produces worsening of hypertension. Or recurrent episodes of flash pulmonary edema, especially it, uh, this occurs in one kidney vertical models. The presence of uh, systolic or diastolic brewery, especially when you have brewery in the abdomen in hypertensive patients, you always look for it. Think about uh, stenosis. Or if a patient is a, a middle or old age patient with a generalized vascular disease, um, coronary cerebrovascular accidents, or with thickened blood vessels on while patient, uh, again, you think about renovascular. So these are the group of patients where you suspect asymptomatic incidental when you have uh, a group of patients where you investigate the patient for some other disease and then look at uh, a hypertensive patient and then find the incidental renal artery stenosis. When you look at the patient, with, then you have a deterioration of the kidney function or when you have an accelerated uh, vascular disease like heart failure or a stroke. Again, you think about renovascular hypertension. Now, how will you screen the patient for renovascular? When you suspect these patients, how do you screen? Uh, maybe a two, uh, one or two, one, one or two, like a decade before, the main tests were Actually, intravenous urogram, that is a minute sequence urogram, plasma renin activity, and the captopril test, and renal captopril renogram. But uh, these tests are not very uh, significant now, not very not used, and uh, it has all become obsolete for uh, many reasons. And uh, now the screening tests are important screen tests are Doppler ultrasonography, MMR angiography, and the CT angiography. Now, some few words about a nephrogram. You call it a minute sequence urogram. You take, after contrast, you take one, two, three, up to five minutes. Every minute you say, take the uh, uh, and the significant finding is a delayed appearance of contrast into the obstructed site and uh, disparity of the renal size for more than 1.5 centimeter and delayed hyperconcentration of the contrast because the fluid is uh, absorbed, fluid and sodium and is absorbed and the contrast is retained uh, in the correcting system. Again, the contrast is delayed excretion of the inter correcting system also. So they take uh, excretion in the correcting system on the obstructive side. And they get a uh, notching of the pelvic epithelial system produced by the collateral vessels. When you have an obstructive system, or you have blood supply, you have a collateral coming from the periphery, producing a, a notching of the pelvic epithelial system. But the problem is that uh, it has got a very poor specificity and sensitivity. So nobody educates the, this uh, procedure nowadays. And uh, the next thing is uh, of uh, value is MR, MR angiogram. And uh, the sensitivity is almost 100% and specificity is more than, more than 90%. So it is a very good investigation for a suspected case of uh, radial artery stenosis and a non-invasive procedure. And, uh, but uh, the problem is that uh, distal lesions can be missed and axillary arteries may be missed. And uh, 
when the GFR is very low, yeah, it may not be advisable to give converse keratinium. And the system, the issue of systemic fibrosis also is there when you have a low GFR. That is the main, these are the main problems. But uh, another uh, option is to go for a CT angiogram. Again, it has got almost the same sensitivity and specificity of uh, uh, detecting renal vascular lesions uh, as MR angiogram. Uh, but uh, the role is uh, when you have a renal insufficiency, you won't be able to do it. And uh, in patients with contrast nephropathy also, it is not advocated. So you can, uh, it is, uh, these situations, MR angiogram weighs over the CT angiogram. Here you can see the, you know, the marked area, you can see the stenotic areas. Another uh, non-invasive procedure is a Dulux Doppler study. And, but the main issue here is it is time-consuming and uh, highly operator-dependent. So if you, you have to have a very good uh, sonologist who is experienced in Doppler study of the real blood flow. And otherwise, you may miss uh, all these lesions. But uh, the advantage is that you can do it with uh, patients with renal failure. Uh, they don't have to be, uh, con discontinue the antihypertensive. There is no nephropathic contrast. Uh, so it, these are the advantages. You can uh, detect it on both sides. And uh, you take uh, multiple sections set of the arteries at different level, and uh, you have to uh, calculate the peak systolic velocity. And uh, you have the a velocity and as well as the uh, resistive index is calculated. And uh, major uh, thing is uh, you have the peak systolic velocity will be very high, almost double the normal uh, at the level of uh, obstruction. Usually, normally you have the, see, you can see the upstroke here, upstroke at the systolic upstroke is the and the diastolic, this is the diastolic flow, a slow down stroke is there. So in a, uh, when you have a obstruction, the peak systolic velocity increases almost double. So the, these are the Doppler findings which are suggestive of uh, uh, obstruction, renal artery obstruction. Uh, Peak historic velocity increases more than 180 to 200 centimeters per second. And the renal artery to aortic ratio is exceeding the 3.3 to 3.5. That these are the two findings which on Doppler. But the main issue is that this is highly operator dependent. So when you have a strong clinical suspicion on your screen, then you have to go in for this is the gold standard. And your and intra-arterial DSA is the gold standard, but it is advocated only if you if you are planning for an intervention. Only if you are planning for an intervention. So this is the you can see the obstruction here. Uh, yes, here you can see the uh, string of beads. Again, very medium fibroblastia. And in German fibroplasia, it usually occurs at the proximal end of the renal artery. Another evaluation estimation which was done earlier was that uh, renal vein renin estimation. And again, uh, because they want to assess the renal vein as well as you want to uh, actually find out the ipsilateral uh, of uh, ipsilateral uh, hyperrenin uh, renin increase and the contralateral renin suppression so you can candidate the ivc and uh, get the renin so these are uh, this was done earlier but nowadays nobody is using uh, doing all these things and again the I did not go to a captopril test and captopril enogram also because uh, that also is not being done because it needs, it is not practical in most of the cases because you have to stop uh, all this, uh, all the medic antihypertensives, most of the antihypertensives and patients have to be 
because uh, they have to be even uh, capital filter and the BB and the renin has to be in capital filter, the renin has to be uh, tested. And there's a lot of fallacies are there. So nobody who is doing the uh, uh, capital filters. And when you do the capital renogram, the basic principle of capital renogram, I will just explain. See, when you, the, in the case of a, a one, one kidney, a two kidney, one kidney, you have the uh, angiotensin uh, two, which is a thin vasoconstrictor of the distal, uh, uh, generalized vasoconstriction and the distal, uh, uh, which is the efferent RTOs. And that is, this constriction is maintaining the TFR on the in the obstructed kidney because the the obstruction the perfusion pressure is maintained by the so when you give an AC inhibitor this uh, uh, angiotensin two is uh, not uh, uh, that is blocked. So the distal obstruction, the efferent arterial obstruction is released. So the perfusion pressure goes down and at the same time the GFR also goes down. So that is, this event this, uh, made use of uh, in the catoprolinogram. But again, there are so many fallacies in the test. Uh, and uh, doing the test also is cumbersome. So even normally reviewers can have a positive uh, catoprolinogram test. So uh, nowadays nobody is doing it. And this is the reason why, this is the reason uh, I, I was earlier discussing. When you suspect, when you find a patient renal function deteriorating on AC inhibitor, on hyper, when, they, when the patient is put on AC inhibitor for hypertension, you have to suspect the renal artery stenosis. Because the efferent arterial restriction is uh, obstruction is uh, released because of the AC inhibitor. So the GFR goes down. So there's a chance of deterioration of renal function. So if it is detected in a hypertensive situation, that is the another indication for screening the patient for uh, renal artery stenosis. Now going to the management. You have a medical treatment, angioplasty, with or without stenting and surgery. These are the options you have. So control of HP is achieved in most of the cases with uh, medication, most of the cases. But uh, mainly I see inhibitors and uh, receptor blockers are used. Uh, but majority uh, uh, AC inhibitors are effective. But uh, if you combine a diuretic, the effect, uh, the control is become much better. But uh, the, once you, that's the initial phase. But when you have an atherosclerotic lesion, it usually progresses with time, and ultimately you will have to add more and more uh, of uh, antihypertensives. And another problem when you control the, you have to monitor is that uh, when you control the BP to a critical, below a critical level, again the Renal blood, the blood flow to the obstructed system, the renal artery where it is obstructed, that also the hydrostatic pressure in the kidney also reduces because of the low BP. And that results in the glomer, more glomerular damage, the tubular atrophy, interstitial fibrosis, and again that goes to further uh, damage to the uh, kidney. So that so these patients have to be meant, uh, monitored for renal function. When you have a unilateral disease, the uh, total renal function may not alter at uh, change uh, in the in the short period. So you have to go for a straight renal function like isotope studies and uh, GFR, GFR estimation, etc. In these patients, carefully, and uh, or a cortical blood flow velocity by tanning in each kidney and renal size measurement also give, may give you a clue so these patients have to be bp has to be monitored very regularly and again those patients putting on medical treatment that uh, renal function has to be with the unilateral the renal function also has to be monitored properly 
Now coming to the next option, the angioplasty. So you have a angioplasty has been tried for uh, for years together, decades together, and uh, the standard indication is uh, narrow segmentation, that is uh, dependent measurement, and the partiality of the and the thing called the osteum. Voice is little. Voice is the problem. Okay, okay. Now, is it okay now? Is it okay? Better, sir. Better, better. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, the indication is less than a yes, narrow segment structure and which is partially occluded and does not involve our skin. And uh, in an angioplasty is a recent onset hypertension. Those patients who are poorly controlled hypertension on medical treatment are unable to tolerate that. And again, if you have some ischemic property, like uh, you have a renal renal biopsy, you have viable glomerulin. Or Usually, do an angioplasty improvement of BP seen as you feel and in six hours. But uh, usually, uh, it can sometimes it may take uh, 40 hours. But uh, early control of BP and the longevity of the control. You have an early control of BP that is in six hours. Those patients, the long term results of angioplasty is good in control of hypertension as well as renal damage. That is one of the observations made. But there are still controversies in this, not a conclusive remark, but that was one of the observations. And again, uh, results are much better in fibromyalgia dysplasia, actually, because it is uh, the uh, uh, atherosclerotic disease is a general, generalized disease, and they can also, also have a, a cholesterol emboli also, which may which may produce a renal dysfunction also. And the results are very good when uh, experienced hands. But restenosis can occur up to twenty to thirty percent of patients. And uh, but uh, the technical difficulties are when the ostium is involved. The, doing an angioplasty, the difficulties occurs when the ostium is involved, or there is a long segment uh, uh, lesion is there. But again, the problem is the long term results are not very good, not very consistent. You cannot predict what is going to be the uh, long term results because. Uh, Unilateral lesions, non osteal lesions, the results are better, but the osteal lesions, the results are poor. And the complications are thrombosis, perforation, as in any other angioplasty, dissection, all this. But uh, the, all these things may lead on to either you may have to intervene surgically or it may lead on to renal loss if it is a, a slow process, thrombosis. Uh, you may lose the kidney. Bilateral lesions, the results are generally poor with angioplasty. Difficult to dilate because it is a generalized disease and it is difficult. And the uh, uh, complication rates are also high. And the restenosis rates are also very high. So these are the uh, some of the angioplasty. You can see the result after angioplasty. Here again, you can see the and the plastic done here. The next is the angioplasty. The other one I have discussed is the angioplasty. Angioplasty with uh, stenting also. This is another option. Here again, the restenosis, uh, even with stenting, restenosis rate of up to 25% is uh, seen. But uh, here again, there is no statistically different, significant difference between uh, pure angioplasty as well as with uh, angioplasty and stenting. But the, here, if you do an angioplasty and it fails, you can always do a, a repeat angioplasty with standing. 
especially in atherosclerotic patients. And uh, one of the issues here is uh, where all this angioplasty and stenting. Uh, whether it is the long-term results, especially the control of hypertension as well as the long-term renal function, you don't, uh, whether it is, uh, it prevents a deterioration of renal function. Some of the studies, recent studies, one of the star trial, stent placement and blood pressure and lipid lowering for prevention of progression of renal dysfunction caused by a prosclerotic osteal stenosis of the renal artery. Uh, it was a, a study conducted uh, for osteal lesions, and it was uh, there was no difference in the degree of PV control. That was the study between when the, it was uh, between the medical control and the medical therapy alone, and uh, stenting and medical therapy. There was actually there was no uh, difference between these two. Another was an astral angioplasty and stenting. For renal artery stenosis. And the study also, the, it was a randomized revascularization in medical therapy and medical therapy. So here also, there was no difference in the BB control between the two groups. Another oral study, cardiovascular outcome and renal atherosclerotic lesions. And this was a multi center uh, randomized control study, medical therapy versus medical therapy and renal artery standing in atherosclerotic artery. But here also there was a, 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 a slight uh, difference in the uh, standing group, a slight reduction in the BP, marginal difference in the control of BP with the standing group was not noted. But it was uh, uh, clinically, it was not very significant. Uh, and uh, and uh, the final conclusion was that the risk of stenting did not seem to worth the potential benefit. So altogether, stenting is does not actually add much to the angioplasty. As as uh, uh, that is what the recent studies are coming up with. So and again, one more observation they have made with other studies is that the long term preservation of the renal function with vascular stenting is not very good. Now the, uh, the angioplasty guidelines, which are the patients who are going to benefit from the patient, uh, angioplasty is the patients with the hemodynamically significant renal artery stenosis and accelerated hypertension or malignant hypertension hypertension with an unexplained unilateral small kidney, hypertension with the intolerance medication. Or if you want to put a stent at the when you have an osteal stenosis. So these are the indications for a, uh, angioplasty. And uh, ideal patient for an angioplasty is when you have the creatinine level between 1.5 and three. If, we, if the creatinine is more than three, again, the results are very poor. Now, this is a flow chart for uh, you have an atherosclerotic renal artery occlusion. First line is uh, always attempt a medical treatment, then go for if it is successful, come observe the patient. Uh, and if it is unsuccessful and there is rapid deterioration of renal function, angiography with uh, standing. If it is successful, observe. If it is technically unstable or not feasible, try for surgical option. And again, fibromuscular dysplasia without primary renal artery, the angioplasty, do for, go for angioplasty. If it is unsuccessful, go for surgery. When an R branch artery is diseased, again, here also you can go for a, uh, angioplasty, but uh, it is better to go for surgical option here. And when to go for surgical? When a renal artery stenosis, we have an aneurysmal or an occlusive disease in the aorta, always requires, uh, and most often requires, not always. Now you can go for intervention here also, but almost always, most often requires a surgical correction. And when you do this, you can also go for a surgical correction of the kidney, renal artery also. When you have macro aneurysm of the renal artery, 
the risk of rupture is high with uh, uh, angioplasty. Here also go for surgical surgery. Malignant or accelerated hypertension uh, with or without acute renal failure. They cannot tolerate medical therapy or who cannot, uh, who shows rapid deterioration of renal function. These are patients who have, uh, who requires a surgical, uh, when angioplasty is uh, technically impossible to accomplish. These are certain small group of patients where surgery, surgery may be indicated. So how to select the patient for surgical treatment? A creatinine should be greater than, if the kidney becomes smaller than a centimeter, uh, the, there will be a lot of nephrosclerosis and uh, the viability of the kidney will be poor. So it's not indicated when the size is less than a centimeter. When you have a good retrograde filling on angiogram by distal collaterals, a lot of collaterals you see it's better. And the renal artery is a distal runoff of, uh, beyond the obstruction. Again, it's very good for surgical uh, intervention. And uh, I also talk shows a good renal, uh, renal function. And if you do a biopsy, a good, uh, fairly good glomerulus and tubules. If you see well preserved glomerulus and tubules, again, that is another indication. Then, or it is a prerequisite, actually. Not, not more than indication. So, surgical procedures are iotorenal bypass or renal on the left side, hepatorenal on the right side, or the iliac, uh, ileal, uh, uh, iliac vessels renal, and rarely autotransplant also. And uh, uh, when there is uh, uh, renal stenosis with a small contracted kidney, whether uh, nephrectomy is going to do anything to control the hypertension, make PC, it's still controversial, but previously we used to offer nephrectomy for these patients, but ultimately whether the results are good or not, we are not pretty sure. But nephrectomy is another option. And now that finishes the first part of the discussion. Now I think we'll go ahead with the uh, case discussion. I don't. Uh, would you like to have the case discussion right now? You can start, sir. You can start. Uh, who are all going to attend for the the team of uh, first graduates? You have uh, anybody? Um, uh, one minute, sir. I'll just. Uh, can somebody volunteer for? Uh, a case discussion and a very, very nice case. It, on is, it, it is uh, just a brief review of uh, recollection of what I have already discussed. Yes, it will yes, be a yes. short discussion. Anybody volunteer? I'll go to the, I'll go to the participants gallery and just pick up uh, the students. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's only a, just a brief recollection of what I have already said. Um, is Sanket there, Sanket? Sanket, can you unmute yourself? Uh, sir, I will volunteer, sir. Okay, Rajkumar. Okay, both of you can uh, unmute and uh, be on the video on, please. Neeraj, are you there? Sir, I will also volunteer, sir. sir okay, okay. Ahead. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Now, go ahead. Dr. Dinesh, please carry on. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Something, some problem. Some problem. Carrying. Screen sharing is coming, but it is not. Uh... Can you go to page down? Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Now, 
This is a 14-year-old female with the recurrent episodes of severe headache. No, sir, we are not seeing the slide. Not seeing the slide. Oh my! Now this slide is okay. Can you see this? No, not yet. Not yet. No, not okay. yet. Now it is okay. We can yeah, see, but you, uh, yeah, you can come to the uh, your case presentation slide. Okay, I think okay, this okay. Fifty-six or fifty-seven number. Okay, okay, okay. I'll come. Okay, now it's okay. Can you? Yes, yes, absolutely right. Uh, okay. Now it is a 14-year-old female with recurrent episodes of severe headache. The last three months, uh, four episodes in the last three months associated with severe headache, scanty amount of watery non-bilious vomiting. Okay, now no fever, nothing. No, no other significant history. Now going to the so, uh, what do we think? Uh, it's a young female with vomiting coming to urologist referred from somebody. What is in your mind? Uh, you first, we'll do the uh, general examination, sir. We'll examine the patient. Okay. Uh, pulse, BP, okay, and okay. Uh, abdominal okay. examination. No, 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 no. Come. Uh, here, the two significant findings are BP is 190-100 for a 14-year-old girl, and abdomen there is a brewing. So, now, what do you think? What is in your mind? What is in your mind? This is uh, is hypertensive. Okay. Uh, so and abnormal brewery are also present. Okay. Uh, so we'll go for. Uh, no, some, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. Go, not going for. Uh, you have to have some some uh, provisional diagnosis or a differential diagnosis. Or straight away you are going for what? You, what do you think it is? <laughs> Just because you had a discussion of renovascular hypertension doesn't mean that every case of abdominal brewery <laughs> mm -hmm. with hypertension is renovascular. So we'll go for... Um... No, what do you think? Something you have to be in. You have, obvious thing is uh, it could be renovascular. Okay. What else? Mm -hmm. you have, do you want to have yeah, something else? Be... Mm. What could be the. See, you have a beep high. Uh, there are two things you have to account for in a 14 year old girl the abdominal brewery and the hypertension. Okay, first thing is always uh, this thing. Next, why there is hypertension? Why there is brewing? There can be any lesions of aorta, like coagulation or uh, any aneurysm. Okay, vascular lesion. Abdominal aortic okay. aneurysm, which can uh, lead to. Uh, very unusual at one uh, 14 year old. Uh, okay, now I'll give you a clue. So it could be, uh, it need not be a renovascular uh, renal artery occlusion. It, uh, can it be a, a vascular tumor? Yeah, yeah, yes, it could be pheochromocytoma. Ah, or, it could uh, be a, a vascular tumor or a vas large, large tumor uh, which is compressing the major vessels. So mm -hmm. no, don't, yes. don't jump into a conclusion that uh, just because the patient is having hypertension and a abnormal brewery, don't straight away go into the conclusion that this is renovated. So this could be, you keep your uh, uh, options open. See, this could be something else also, a vascular tumor, an antrenal tumor, or a large tumor compressing the major vessels. So, uh, okay. Now, how will you proceed? 
Sir, we'll go for a uh, ultrasound abdomen and uh, urine analysis. Oh, urine is normal, uh, and ultrasound abdomen. So uh, kidney function. Uh, uh, here again, is, this is uh, other thing is CBS is, is reported as normal as per the mm-hmm. um, urologist is examined, so he didn't find anything. But there is a, a retinopathy already, so it's a long uh, so it is a long-standing disease. It's not uh, yes. so. There is again one more clue. So hemoglobin is this one. Uh, creatinine is normal. So the creatinine is normal. Okay. Potassium is two point nine. Does it give a clue? What the what does the aldosterone produce? Aldosterone will produce uh, hypokalemia. Okay, okay, okay. So this is. Uh, But uh, this does not occur usually because you have the uh, the opposite normal kidney. See, in the old lateral mm-hmm. lesion, this does not occur because you have the normal opposite kidney. So yes. But you you always keep in mind when you have a CR report like this. Okay. Now, this is the you, what you are asking for. Uh, if you cannot read, I I'll just give you the details. The kidney, uh, right kidney is eight point five centimeter long. The other one is nine point five. Nine point eight, and the parenchymal echoes are normal, and the uh, waveforms are all, almost uh, uh, good, except that the acceleration time on the right side is at the poles are uh, increased acceleration time. But other rest of the things are all the parameters are normal on Doppler. So there is a decrease of more than one centimeter size on the right side, mm-hmm. and some acceleration time is increased. These are the two findings. Not very, very significant because the size difference is only one point two, one point three centimeters. And uh, okay, now go ahead. How? What? What will you? How will you proceed? So these are the things you have to look into. When the and the and again, parenchymal echoes. Uh, here the parenchymal echoes are good, but uh, you can uh, when the size is uh, less and parenchymal echoes are also not very good. Then again, you have to suspect. Uh, You can still suspect a vascular anomaly. Okay, now um, you have a, a Doppler study with this findings and a brewy hypertensive patients. No other lesions in the kidney or in the abdomen. So, so we'll uh, we can start with the medical therapy, sir. For uh, uh, you don't uh, don't would you? There is a hypertensive. This. For uh, medical therapy, okay, I treat the patient with, uh, of the hypertension. Okay, very well. Now, do you stop it there or uh, uh, control the BP? And are you happy with this? See, you have you you must have gone through the uh, discussion very well. Uh, this Doppler study is very very operator dependent. You yes. remember always that unless you are very good at it and you are doing it, so uh, it is or you know the person who is doing is very good. There is no reason why you should not believe this. But the technique, technology is such that it is really operator dependent. So, but and you have some, a physical examination showed a bruise, and you have some findings a decrease in the size, and. Uh, Some acceleration, so you stop stop it there, and uh, or would you like to want to make a diag- uh, confirm a diagnosis, especially if it is a fourteen year old girl, and uh, if at all there is, you are still you are uh, suspicion is a renal renal vascular disease. If it is a renal vascular disease, what do you think it is going to be? Is it atherosclerotic or fourteen year old girl? So usually, young females, uh, uh, fibromuscular dysplasia is more common. Muscular dysplasia, of which not medial, medial hyperplasia, it is a little more older. So the yeah. other lesions are always, or, or it always progresses, mm-hmm. and produces renal damage also. Uh, in those situations, would you like to? Uh, Just are you happy with controlling hypertension, keeping quiet, or would you like to uh, uh, investigate further? 
I would like to know the specific type of the uh, cause of uh, renal hypertension. So what are you going to do? Okay, so, a specific uh, cause of renal hypertension. Or are you suspecting a renal vascular hypertension? Why do you think the brewery is there? So now, because of the stenotic now, segment, the blood crossing uh, ah, now, to the kidney, so the stenotic. You, you haven't made a diagnosis from this up to this uh, disc, uh, discussion or uh, investigation. You haven't made any diagnosis of uh, renal artery occlusion or any occlusion in the vascular tree. Only yes, thing so you, so have, you, you have got is you have got a brew either, a hypertensive patient of 14 year old girl, and a Doppler study of suggestive of a disparity in the size. And uh, some acceleration changes. On uh, since brew is there, sir, we need to see for the lesions, sir. CT angio is required. Okay, sir. yeah, definitely you have to go for a, especially in a young young girl with a history like an accelerated hypertension. All this uh, indicates to a screening test, it, and uh, uh, especially when your Doppler scan is inconclusive. Definitely, it is inconclusive. So definitely, you have to go for a. CT angio or a MR angio, whatever. An angiogram is needed. Okay. Now, a MR angio showed a marked stenosis at the proximal portion of the right renal artery, a left of 1.1 centimeter from the ostium. Okay. Now, we don't have the much of a. See, you can see the kidneys, uh, both the kidneys. The left kidney looks fine. Maybe a little bit of compensatory. We don't know hypertrophy is there or not. But the right kidney is small, size is small. And uh, lesion, the stenotic lesion, you can't see here because we have only these two images here. But uh, it is reported that there is a very, there, uh, uh, that is a proximal, there is a segment of uh, renal artery stenosis here. Now, what are you going to do? Is the BP is well controlled? Mr. Goodwins, you are not audible. Unmute, unmute yourself. You are muted, Goodwins. Sir, since on MR we can see that stenosis is there, it is reported. We will yeah. get, sir, one angiogram done, sir, to see the uh, uh, by passing dye, sir, to see the flow of the dye okay. and to see the level of the stenosis, sir. Would you like to do an angiogram or, uh, uh, that is a DS? Uh, uh, arterial DSA, or would you or do? Would you like to plan something else together, or try, do an angiogram today and wait for some, get the report and later do something, or would you like to do a uh, something together? So since Are MR you... angio is already done, sir, we can directly plan for angiogram and if needed, stenting, sir. Stenting or angioplasty, depending on the protocol. Angio yes. Yes. Uh, straight up angioplasty alone or stenting because the uh, recent studies are showing that stenting may or may not uh, change much uh, the outcome may not change but depending on the protocol because these are all not conclusive conclusive evidence so you can either do a angioplasty alone or an um, angioplasty plus stenting so once you have all you have already got a diagnosis of a diagnosis here so you can always do an angio uh, renal angio uh, uh, definite this is the gold standard renal angiogram is the gold standard so, go for the angiogram. So, angiogram has to be done. This is the angiogram. And the treatment given was uh, medical management. And uh, so, and uh, what are the uh, complications you are going to encounter, you may encounter <coughs> of this procedure? Sir, uh, pseudo aneurysm can form, sir. Uh, why should there be a pseudo aneurysm? Uh, so, coarctation, chance of coarctation of the renal artery at the site where we perform that uh, stenting is there. Okay, you can you can in, uh, traumatize the, so you can uh, yeah. perforate the perforate the vessel. You can traumatize. You can dissect dissection produce dissection. You can produce thrombosis. 
and uh, other complications like stent migration. And if you injure uh, the vessel, usually it will. It, usually, when there is a injury, is only minimal injury. You what you said is correct. You can as you do aneurysm. But usually, uh, once the renal artery is injured, you will have to. Most often, you will have to main renal artery injured. You will have to go and intervene. You will have to open and uh, reconstruct. Or and again, late thrombosis also is <clears throat> when you in when you do an intimal uh, injury. You produce an intimal injury. Thrombosis also is again a chance. Uh, there is a chance of thrombosis, ten migration, oh. or with, even oh. without ten migration, thrombosis. Okay. Post this is the post angiography, angioplasty. Okay. And now, anything else you would like to discuss, or uh, anybody? How are you going to follow up this case? Anyway, I have, uh, so far we have discussed about the uh, uh, complications. Now, how are you, Raj Kumar? Are you going to follow up? So we can uh, do three monthly uh, renal function tests and uh, blood pressure monitoring. Blood pressure monitoring regularly, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, immediately, see, even 24 hours, the blood pressure control may occur because of okay. once you do an angioplasty. So, to, uh, uh, in the hospital, uh, regular monitoring, then uh, weekly and monthly, yes, then re regular monitoring of the renal function. But uh, the renal function, the creatinine may not be significant because the opposite kidney is fine. So, make sure that you monitor the split renal function by a sort of studies. And uh, Doppler studies of the uh, cortical vessels on the uh, on ipsilateral cortical vessels, because uh, that there may be impedance of the flow still. Restenosis has to be looked into. Sir, if we are planning for any open procedure, reconstructive procedure, before that, do we need to get a biopsy of the kidney to see for that fibrosis which has occurred or not? Uh, especially when there are sizes in the borderline. See seven, eight between seven and eight centimeter between, especially or if the echoes are not very good, the echoes are raised. Uh, the kidney uh, uh, images on a ultrasound, the echoes are raised. You have to definitely get and uh, see the otherwise that is a prerequisite actually. So the but if you have a good sized kidney with good echoes, parenchymal echoes are really good. The cortical medullar differentiation is good. Then there is no need for that. Wow. Sir, sir, if on renal function scan the function is good, then it is not needed, sir. Function is good, uh, but uh, you, uh, function function itself is not. Uh, uh, no, that is only one criteria. But you have you see proteinuria in the urine. Proteinuria here it will not come from the normal kidney. It should be from this kidney that shows the renal damage, glomerular damage, proteinuria. If you see the uh, the size is in the borderline. And if the echoes are not very good, then definitely biopsy. Okay. Uh, if, uh, okay. So isotope alone, you don't go by one test alone. Isotope alone. Take everything okay. together because I, uh, biopsy is again going to be against a uh, invasive procedure. So do it only if it is absolutely indicated. Okay. Okay. Shall I go to chat section to see any questions okay. pending? Okay. Yeah, um, I think there's one question regarding this case only so if BP is not controlled uh, after stenting. I think stenting, you have made it clear, it's angioplasty. Stenting okay. doesn't have, and there is accelerated hypertension. Then is it an indication for nephrectomy? Uh, it's uh, it's not actually nephrectomy. We don't know whether it is going to work. It's not. Uh, you have to control the hypertension by medication actually. Yeah. I think there's n there's no more question in this chat section. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Rajkumar Gurwansh and all that, if you have any question, please ask. Otherwise, uh, we'll have a vote of thanks to Dr. Dinesh and then wind up. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay.
so thank you dr dineshan is uh, a privilege on behalf of indian school of urology urology site of india to propose a vote of thanks uh, i think uh, this was a very tough and a very complex topic which has been made very easy with your uh, presentation uh, i think for uh, for residents uh, one message you have uh, given which is very loud and clear Uh, below 30 and above 55 if somebody has a a severe hypertension accelerated hypertension and refractory these three terms which he has used in his slide that should always bring your attention towards the renal vascular hypertension and uh, i think he has given um, a beautiful way of how to investigate but uh, dr dinesh in one question to you which is uh, asked in the exam if you have a very strong suspicion of uh, Uh, a renal vascular hypertension uh, do you think after history we can straight away go for formal formal angio and angioplasty or shall we go again with the uh, ultrasound ct angio then formal angio along with angioplasty this I is a common question <laughs> that's true that's true uh, thing is uh, it is um, uh, that uh, standard angio arterial intraarterial angio nowadays it is less invasive but still it is uh, uh, most of them uh, the, even in routine angioplasty they may they may uh, they would like to have a road map yeah. for uh, for the uh, uh, for, uh, with a ct angio so i i uh, i i i will not uh, penalize somebody if they say that uh, i will go for a ct angio then then go for a uh, uh, standard uh, that is the uh, 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 intraarterial so arterial dsc yeah thank you thank you thank you dr dinesh and um, probably one more thing which you have to understand uh, he has uh, um, underlined the uh, uh, the current evidence of very less uh, role of uh, capital pulmonogram if you see a uh, five years back and you used to get a note on capital pulmonogram and uh, nowadays the the utility in diagnosis uh, Uh, is going and uh, one one important thing which he has mentioned other than this um, severe refractory and accelerated is if you are giving any patient uh, angiotensin receptor blocker uh, or uh, this is our um, uh, and you cannot uh, convert convert as enzyme blocker if the renal function deteriorates this is again an an evidence of renal vascular hypertension he has very nicely taken you for Uh, uh the investigative protocol in this management and um, uh, he, he has mentioned that uh, the angiogram and angio angioplasty is uh, more or less uh, suitable for all these uh, all these patients the the surgery which are mentioned in the book regarding various uh, aortorenal bypass Uh, uh, and the use of saphenous graft for the reconstruction of the renal artery and its branches are becoming less and less and less uh, so Uh, with this i conclude my comments and i again convey uh, my thanks on behalf of uh, uh, indian so school of urology and usi to dr dinesh who kindly accepted our invite uh, thank you dr dinesh and thank you all the viewers for being there um, for this webinar thank you good night stay safe stay well sir okay thank, thank you, you. bye 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 sir